In a flooded field in the Sumas Valley in Abbotsford, a rescue mission is underway. We want the lead line to leave so that it's slicing across the bottom, not bouncing along behind, letting the fish out. Recent torrential rains caused the nearby Sumas River to breach its banks, sweeping migrating coho salmon on their way to spawn off course. The concern that the now receding waters have left some salmon trapped in the fields. I was contacted by Pacific Salmon Foundation about a week ago um, to see if it would be possible to put a crew together and go out and just have a look. There was a time when this valley was a lake and salmon could come and go freely. But that changed in the 1920s when it was drained to create farmland. Now the crew, including members of the Sumas First Nations, has their work cut out for them. Yeah, it's full, well, it's supposed to get below zero next week. So next year, next week, yeah. So I mean, the pond, so I think this week's our shot. Biologist Mike Pearson, who specializes in freshwater fish, has every reason to believe there are salmon here. Two days ago, he rescued five of them. And this is where we caught the spawners, right in here, right here. That's why we came back. And then there's Joey's account of the one that got away. And once I started bringing it in. I saw a tail and then it popped off, but it was it was really cool. I never would have ever thought that I would be in my field fishing for coho salmon. But hours after they began, there's little to show for their efforts. Time to check out the smaller flooded fields on the other side of Nell's Road. After dragging the net through three of the ponds with the same result. That's pretty quiet. No, they don't have anything. It's time to head back across the road to the first flooded field, where almost immediately their luck changes. Someone saw one just sitting right at the surface and I scooped him in this yellow bucket, but it's a coho spawner. By now the team is cold and tired, but this healthy male coho has renewed their energy. The net is cast again, and this time it doesn't come back empty. Another male. On the other side of the net, a large female. They're, you know, the, the most important fish, obviously, because that's where the eggs are. So getting them to the spawning grounds is, uh, is the key thing. After languishing in the muddy ponds for weeks, no time is wasted in getting them back to the Sumas River to continue their journey. Female coho, full of eggs. Oh, wow. Yeah. That one's a male. They can go lay some eggs together. <laughs> in the meantime, the last net of the day has been cast and is already being hauled in. Inside, coho number four, another female. Within minutes, she too is brought to the river for release. Big female coho, and she's still in beautiful condition. And there she goes. The four coho rescued on this day, along with those caught a few days earlier, brings the total to nine. It may sound small, but it's a significant number. The thing is, these are our most endangered species of coho's, right? So if we can save a few of them there. I mean, I don't know how many we comes back, but I mean, if we get four females and four males, whatever, a couple of females, then we've saved a thousand of eggs in, yeah. in, in one. A couple thousand eggs in each female. In each so. female. The coho runs are so small that even five to 10 fish can make a difference to the run. That they survive to spawn is vital because the eggs from this year's earlier runs were almost certainly destroyed by the flood. I think their chances are quite reasonable. They're literally on the home stretch. So yeah, I think they've got a very good chance.